What is going on, Jet fans? Matt O'Leary back with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be getting into the Jet scrimmage today. It was Green and White scrimmage day at, I was going to say MetLife Stadium. It used to be at MetLife Stadium, but no, at the practice facility. A little bit of a scrimmage situation, and we'll break down the biggest storylines from that. Also, as you can see, some upgrades happen to the studio. Uh, so we are working through it. Almost done. I think I am almost done here, but just wanted to thank you guys for, I don't know, one, supporting, but two, just being there with me as I get this up to speed. It's been a bit of a process, but we, we are getting there and working through and covering everything together. So the first story of the day was that there was no Morgan Moses or Tyron Smith. Totally normal. Totally okay. Morgan Moses joined the Jets yesterday, and Tyron Smith was practicing yesterday. I'm going to say scheduled off day for both. Nothing of concern. Olu Fashionu stepped in, and I thought he was okay. Maybe a little bit streaky at times. I think in the first, so it was kind of broken up into two halves. The first half or first segment, however you want to call it, I thought he looked better. And then in the second one, he got beat a couple of times, so... Strong start, kind of got exposed a couple of times, but again, it's a rookie second week of training camp. Things are going to be okay, but overall, I thought it was an up and down, okay day for Olu Fashionu. Olu actually spoke to the media today after the scrimmage, and he talked about what he's been learning so far from Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses and how awesome that is. Again, I'm just, I feel like like a lot of people aren't aren't blessed to be in that type of position where you have two great tackles in the same room and you know I've been making the most out of it and they've been they've been awesome you know they've they're always you know right behind me just you know guiding me in the right path uh, helping me with any any and everything that I need just giving me extra advice on how to you know take my game to the next step so it's been great really excited for Olu Fashionu again I fully expect to see him this year um, I am excited about Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses too, but the likelihood of those guys playing 17 games, very slim. I think we see a pretty good chunk of Olu this year. Um, and I am comfortable and confident that he could come in and perform at a high level. Now, two Jets members of the secondary did not practice. No Sauce Gardner, no Michael Carter. Michael Carter, as we know, got banged up in one of the practices this week. He will be out a week or two, according to uh, Robert Sala, so not expected to be a long-term thing, which is a great sign. Uh, and Sauce Gardner didn't practice today. He was excused he was excused earlier in the week as well. He got back to the facility today, this morning. Um, and he was there, but he just didn't didn't practice. So I, I would expect Sauce Gardner to be back out there very soon. Again, not anything that I'm concerned over. Robert Sala spoke on his thoughts of how the scrimmage went, and he was very excited about the results here in this one. What are your overall uh, impressions and thoughts about the uh, scrimmage? I thought it was awesome. There was a lot of really cool moments. You know, offense uh, had a couple of really good drives to start, stalled with a bad snap. Um, um, then a fumble that ended the drive, but regrouped in the second half and uh, took advantage of every scoring opportunity, I think, uh, to show resolve in that matter. Um, There's a lot of different situations that we were able to hit naturally in, it, uh, in the game overall. I know you guys don't know the scoring system, but it came down to that two-minute drive to win it. Um, but uh, the guys got a lot of good work in. We came out healthy. A little bit of some guys cramped, but uh, it's a good day. A really, really good day. Sal liked what he saw today, and I think there's some things to like from both the offense and the defense and some things that you'd probably like to see improved. And that's okay. Each day has been a little bit different. Uh, if you remember, it was the, the offense had a really hot run, and then when the pads came on, the defense was leading, and then the last couple days, I thought the offense jumped in front. And today, I think I would give the edge to the defense, although it wasn't like... The offense didn't do anything. There were some nice moments, but there were also some things of concern and a slight more of that on the offensive side than the defense. So I'll say defense won the day and they were the better unit. Uh, we got to talk about it uh, because it, uh, the clip of it came out and was making the rounds. Uh, Joe Tipman had his uh, snap issues return a little bit. He had a high snap that killed a drive and they had to settle for a field goal. Um, not ideal. This is a guy who the Jets are relying on to be their starting center. I think he can be this team's starting center. I think he is a good player. He just is 
Missing a little high right now. Robert Sala said it's one of the least things that he's worried about at the moment. I I would put my worry scale on a one to ten at like a four. I'm not saying it's a complete nothing burger, but it's not. It, you know, I'm not hitting the panic button saying like this is horrific. But I think the Jets have been pretty dismissive. Uh, both Robert Sala and uh, the offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett have seem like yeah this is not an issue at all and while I think that is probably too lax I also don't think it's something you'd be like oh my god get a back like get it get another starter in here right now Connor McGovern bring him back and have him start no if you want to sign Connor McGovern because you'd like an upgrade to backup center because right now the backup center is Wes Schweitzer different story I'm not unseating Joe Tipman, but again like I've said for the last week now it is something that he needs to work on, and it is something that has to get fixed before the start of the regular season, which is still over a month of way, a month away. So he got about four weeks to fix this thing. Do you think he could do it? I think he got. I think he's got a shot. On a positive for the offense, Alan Lazard had a pretty good practice again today, and that's good. I'm I'm happy for him because he was really struggling last year. He was in the doghouse, was a healthy scratch, and look, I don't think he's going to be a, a wide receiver two on this team. You know, he got pretty good money here from the Jets, but if he could just be a functional third or fourth receiver in this offense and not be a net negative, that is a major win. Is he still overpaid for what that is? Yes. No doubt, but again, can he be a functional offensive piece and be one of the better, you know, run blocking wide receivers? Because in Green Bay, that was his strength. That was one of the reasons why, hand up, I was someone who wanted Alan Lazard because I thought, one, the connection with Rodgers would work, and two, because he has a very good blocking ability. That was before they trade away Elijah Moore, Michael Hardman goes off the rails, and before Corey Davis. Uh, retire. So things changed very, very quickly with that wide receiver room. And Alan Lazard had the worst season of his career. But again, if he could be a, a guy who catches a couple big third downs, maybe gives you a couple touchdowns this year and, I don't know, 250 receiving yards, would you sign up for it? I guess you have to. I don't think he's going to give you in that seven to 800 range. I just think there's way too many guys in front of him in the pecking order who are going to be, you know, getting more targets than that. But you know, overall, can he be more productive this year? I think there's a chance. Jalen Holmes has been making a name for himself on the defensive line. He's fighting for a spot, and he had a big play against Olu Fashionu for a sack. That was one of the guys that beat Fashionu. Jermaine Johnson also in the second half of practice, I thought, was having his way a little bit with the rookie, which is going to happen. But Jalen Holmes is a name that stood out. Other defensive linemen that stood out, Leaky Fotu was really good again. He came away with uh, what would have been a sack. Michael Clements has had a couple good practices back-to-back. -back. Love that for him. And then you have Eric Watts and Braden McGregor. The two UDFAs were playing with the second team, uh, and they both teamed up for a sack against Tyron Smith. Uh, excuse me, against Tyrod Taylor. Too many tie names on this team. I got confused a second. I apologize. But, you know, strong day for the defensive lineman too. So uh, that's pretty much my biggest takeaways from the scrimmage. If you were there, let me know down below in the comments what you thought some of the bigger things were. Uh, get after me on social media. Subscribe if you're new. I'll catch you guys next time.